Hello everyone, and welcome to my Invention Batch 2 analysis for Iron Man mode, and specifically, how it impacts Iron Man. Yes, this is a PowerPoint presentation, just because it's easier for me to put it together that way. So, there's significant new content in the Machines, the Spring Cleaner, and the Divinomatic. There's some other additions with Invention Batch 2, I just don't find them nearly as exciting as any of these. So, approximations on various new rates. Uh, these are some various variables that I used in a lot of my calculations. There are other ones that aren't included here, uh, specific to the uh, Hyde Tainer and the Plank Maker. Um, the Plank one is shown on the slide later on, uh, but the Hyde Tainer, I was just, I was interested, so I looked at, at the rate of... Um, how many hides you can tan per hour with make leather, and it's just not good, so I only speak about ithyl. Um, so some notes, uh, these are double gnats through abyss to get about 10.8k gnats per hour, uh, bowstrings from temple trekking with 10% uh, Mauritania X3 bonus gets about 3.7k, I double checked this with Overfletch and he said he was making over 3k, uh, so it seems about right. The gold is from Spiritual Mages, or Spiritual Magi, in your personal Slayer dungeon. And then it has an assumption that you're doing uh, Alks with the Alker MK2, and I take that into account. Uh, I divide the approximate gold per hour by about how much time you have to spend uh, gathering charge to Alk all of the items you collect. Um, this is an approximate rate on charge per hour as well of 135k on the image. Uh, but if you're non-AFK at Incandescent Energy with the Divinomatic, you get somewhere from 110k to 135k, depending on what all you're using, if you're catching your Guthixian butterflies or Chronicle Fragments or whatever. Uh, so it changes a little bit, but like super focused, I was able to hit about 138k, so I, I dropped it down to 135k since that seemed kind of lucky. And, uh, yep. The um, gold bowstring and coal rates, the coal at Twin Furies, are based upon high tier gear. Uh, so what I mean by this is that you're using like a lance or a scythe at Twin Furies, that you're using your, your Sun Spear tier 70 gear at Temple Trekking, and you probably have uh, maxed out followers there as well, you know, Mauritania Legs 3. And that um, for your Gold, gold per hour at uh, Spiritual Magi, you're using tier 90 of something. Uh, you're probably going to be using um, aggression potions. You know, you're going to have five spots in your personal Slayer dungeon just for Spiritual Magi of different kinds. Uh, Legendary Pet will increase the rate a little bit, but I don't think it matters that much. Uh, but also Corruption Blast is kind of important and that you're overloaded the entire time. Uh, so really that number should be a little bit lower because you have to spend time making overloads, you have to spend time um, making uh, aggression potions, but that's that's a little too much to go into. So your approximate GP rate will be right around what I have there. Uh, that's sourced from per PPC's video on Spiritual Magi in his personal Slayer dungeon. I liked it about how many Alex he got, about how much GP he got, and yeah. I sourced a lot of this stuff. I didn't link all of it in the spreadsheet that I'll have in the description, um, but, you know, for some of the videos that I referenced, uh, there there will be links. So, on to the machines. These are fantastic, okay? The MK2 versions always have faster processing rates. However, in general, they have a higher cost in charge per item that they process. Uh, so every hour they tick over, there's a certain number of items they process and a certain number of charge they use. The disassembler and potion producer are weird because they have a lower charge per item in the Mach 2 version or the MK2. Uh, however, still don't think the potion producer is worth using. You don't get the scroll of cleansing effect and that is worth just so much. Uh, it's worth, I don't know, I think it's 10 to 11% uh, extra XP in Herblore, and Herblore is one of the harder skills to train on Iron Man, so I really don't think it's worth using. If you want to, if you've got, like, loads of herbs, if you went for 200 mil farming, and you've got, like, 70, 80,000 herbs or something crazy in your bank, maybe use it, because it saves you some time, but I, st I still don't think it's that good. Um, everything except the Plank Maker 
is fantastic in terms of items processed per hour when you compare it to manual rates. And uh, what I mean by that is what I say in the last bullet point here. Uh, so how I determine the rates for these, because, you know, they have a fixed rate. They only do so many items per hour. They only use so much charge per hour. However, if you look at how much uh, charge you get in one hour of divination, and then you take just how many uh, charges are used per item that gets processed, you divide those two together, you can get just how many items you effectively process by doing an extra hour of divination. Now, there is extra time that you have to wait. There's a, there's a bit of a time sink there uh, where you might take... You know, if you do two hours of divination, you throw a lot of stuff into a disassembler, it might take two weeks to process. But that is time that you are not having to disassemble stuff yourself. And that's very important. Uh, so if I go on to the next slide, you can see the disassembler MK2 does about 35,000 items in an hour of divination. On average, you're going to do about 3K manually disassembling. So that machine alone saves you about 10 hours of time for every hour you do of divination. It's incredible. And you can see the same rates on the Alker MK2. 22,500 processes per div hour. Normally you would do 3,000 as well. The Tanner is also good. And the Planker is... Well, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, so, as it says, standard Alex disassembles 3k items an hour. Tanning hides and ithils, about 10,500 an hour when you consider the time you have to spend at Spiritual Magi to earn the 200 GP per hide cost. That cost goes away when you use the tanner, the same with the plink maker. You no longer have to spend any gold. And uh, the processes per div hour goes up if you use Cursed Energy. Uh, I'll talk about that actually in the last slide. You can get a higher charge rate. If you used Curse Energy, same goes like if you have the uh, the Aura, the Enrichment Aura, but I don't personally have that, so I couldn't test that rate. Um, it, cursed Energy is just something I don't like to touch because of how, uh, how sketchy it is up there in the wilderness. And uh, so using the new Plank Maker MK2, you can barely earn enough GP to beat the machine's rates with Teak Logs. You see there's about 9.3k versus 9k the teak per hour however this is not the full picture uh, see i'm saying that's via butler the gp cost so that's the uh, gp you can earn in an hour divided by uh, how many planks that would process for you so for mahogany it's very clear that you should use the machine however for teak you can earn a little bit more gold uh, then you can divination energy in an hour, which means it's probably worth using your butler. However, using your butler to make planks requires two processes with your butler as opposed to just one. You would have to give him the notes to go unnote at the bank, and then he would have to go make planks. Um, and these numbers even change more if you're not using Steve, the wonderful mind-controlled monkey butler, that would definitely put Teak down below the machine, uh, the machine rate. Um, so it's two processes if you use the butler versus one process if you use the machine, which is just give the, uh, well, you can give noted planks to the butler to go unnote, or you can just tell them to go get planks for you from your bank. So that's just one process versus the two, and that means that you're going to lower your construction XP per hour. Um, if you've got perfect clicks and everything, it's basically the same, uh, but it is a little more click intensive regardless. Uh, so it's it's probably worth using machine in like every case. You know, if if you're if you're crazy about construction or something like that, you have like billions of teaks that you need to go through, <laughs> and uh, you know you're going for 200 mil construction, you have all the teaks plank, uh, banked, and you're just like, well, I'm trying to minimize my GP cost, then then you would just use the machine. If you had way more than enough GP, you could just use the butler. Well, you know, whatever. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Um, all right, so on to the spring cleaner. Now, this is, this is going to be kind of a contentious point, I think. Some people might not agree with me here, but I don't think it's that good. Really, the tensile cost is just absurd, and that there there's no good sources of subtle components in the game. Uh, it means that if you just go out of your way to make springs, 
You don't get that many per hour. See, with magic logs, going for magic shield bows, and uh, spending your time, you can, if you manage to do 40 shop runs per hour, going to the uh, Alcarid Scimitar Shop, which is right by the Lodestone, and the Sophonim Scimitar Shop, which is uh, at the north gate of Sophonim, so you'd have to go to Minifos and then run, nor uh, run east, then north. Um, if you can do that in one and a half minutes, you do 40 of those runs in an hour, approximately. You throw those items into your disassembler, then you make shield bows, you take the time accounted uh, just to gather bowstring, then fletch shield bows, string shield bows, throw them into your disassembler, and then gather charge in the end. You only get 67 springs per hour. That is just not good. <laughs> um, I, can, I, I don't know if I actually show it in here. I can't remember if I show it in this PowerPoint or not. But in the end, after all of that time spent, okay, which is like 20-something hours, you get around 31,000 smithing XP per hour if you're getting rune items that drop about 1.7 bars per item. And this is even worse whenever you account for the partial success mechanic, which is where a spring gets used, and you get some unknown amount of coal. So, I just automatically assumed that you would get no coal from a lot of these partial successes, and that means that you have to spend 11 seconds per addy bar that dropped, or 14 seconds per rune bar uh, that would have dropped at Twin Furies gathering coal to make up for what coal you lose in that partial success. Now, it should be clear, this is probably good if you're not just going out of your way to make springs. If you have extra tensile components for going for P4E2, if you have a lot of subtle components from scavenging and you have nothing else to use them on, or if you're just like crazy, you're not doing either of those things, and you just have loads of components or whatever sitting around, you can make springs, then make the springs, they're good. They'll help you out whenever you're doing Slayer. They'll give you more smithing XP. They'll help you push towards 200 mil smithing. But it's just not that good to go out of your way to do it. You're not going to get, like, any good rates. Like, a 67 springs an hour. Then you got an extra hour of time on top of that to, to like, use them up at Abbey Demons or something. And you only use it on rune plate bodies because they drop three bars. It's just... It's not worth it. It's not worth the trouble. Uh, okay, and this is the last the last bit. Uh, it's a Divinomatic Vacuum. There's a significant increase in the charges gathered per hour. There are a lot of Mainscapers saying that this is not too good. This is not worth using. It's not worth the trouble of going for 120 powerful components. But from my own testing, there's a significant increase in charges gathered per hour simply because you don't have to run back to the Rift thing to throw the, the memories in and turn it into energy. And you don't have to go through the process of actually making the Divine Charge in the end. So, it's good. It might not be that big of an increase in your Divine Charge per hour. So if you're a mainscaper, it would be kind of expensive to make in the first place. And you'd only see like very small rate returns. So it would take a long time to pay for its own cost. So, you know, you have a, you have a value judgment to make there. But if you're an Iron Man... You make this. Like, you disassemble some battle staves, you you do scavenging to get your powerful components, you, you go do uh, spirit terror birds, whatever you want to do. It, it's worth it. Uh, so my own rates at Incandescent Wisps are from around 110k to 135k per hour. I know that's a big variance, but it ultimately depends on uh, if you're using Prism of Dowsing, which is a little bit uh, extra busy work. You know, you gotta... I switch to a Lava Battle Staff, I carry some Gnats and Souls on me, and I, I, I cast it every 5 minutes. Uh, if you have the Div Aura, it should be about a 15% increase in that rate. I personally don't have it, so 135k without it. If you got the Max Tier Aura, it should go up a little bit, maybe even 150k, so that'd be pretty good for you. And uh, Nightmare Mospa, that's a pretty big one, uh, but sometimes it's kind of hard to make those pouches if you don't do Nightmares often. You know, you, you might run out, so it uh, may not be worth it for you. Um, so right, right there in the middle, though, uh, it's risky, but apparently okay to use in the Wilderness Accursed. Now, if I remember correctly, in the, uh, in the pre-launch, 
not post-launch, in the pre-launch live stream, they had said that this was always going to drop on death, that it would not be reclaimable. And if you dropped it in the wilderness, it would be gone. You would lose it every single time. Now, apparently that's not the case. I've gotten this, I checked the wiki, the, the Tin Man told me himself that that is not the case, and that they have a reclaim cost of 1k, so they're safe to use but you can't carry any gear on you because you drop it, you know, over everything else, basically. Pretty much anything else has a reclaim cost uh, over 1k. Um, however, I'm going to highlight this because I do believe that this is not intended, uh, that it may change soon. <laughs> so be careful. Be watching patch notes. If you're, if you're thinking about going to the wilderness, um, you know, before you just risk those 120 powerful components, you, you check the wiki. Uh, because that would be pretty horrible to lose. That's a pretty big blow, actually, losing those 120 powerful comps. Uh, but yeah, with that, that's the end of my analysis. You can check down in the description. As I said earlier, there will be a Google Sheets link that has a lot of this math that I did. These were just the key takeaways. Uh, you can also change up the rates, put in your own personal value. So if you are doing Cursed Energy and you have a higher charge rate, you can see just how many disassembles you can get per hour uh, it'd be a pretty fun rate if you have a lower gold rate because you're like a lower tier iron man or you don't have just that amazing gear like i was talking about for spiritual magi you can enter that number and see how everything changes up for you to see what is and isn't worth it for your account at any given point uh, i do believe i have it set up so that you can save a copy to your own google drive and uh edit it yourself uh you can't edit my copy of course because that's that's my copy, but you can make a copy yourself. Uh, if that is not the case, please just let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll try to figure it out and change it. Uh, with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful, at least. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.